welcome to a new vlog. It has been a few days since I last filmed. You may be able to tell my voice sounds a little funky. I did come down with a cold this week, which I'm like, who gets sick in the summertime? Really? Like, come on. But I'm hoping this means I will not get sick at all during the school year, which is wishful thinking and probably will not happen, but it's a thought at least. So this week I have been sick, but then on top of that, I've had meetings every day this week so far. So I've been quite busy, um, but it's all been really good stuff, some professional developments, and uh, this today will be my second day of doing a professional development on restorative practices. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yesterday was awesome. That was day one of restorative practices. Today is day two. I have to head out in about 30 minutes to go to that. So um, I'm really excited. I am going to do a video all about restorative practices at some point. My hope is to get that at least filmed next week. I'm not sure if I'll get it up next week, but at least filmed. So anyways, um, I have had quite a few packages come in, some stuff I've ordered, some stuff that has been sent to me. So I'm like, okay, I need to sit down and film this video or at least like this intro so that way I can get this stuff put away because I try to just like leave it in a big pile before I film it because um, I don't want to like forget to talk about anything. So without further ado, let's show you the goods. So the first thing I'll show you I actually picked up and it's kind of a funny thing to haul but it is this cute little lunch box and I'll try to remember to link this below if you're interested in it but it's just like a kid's lunch box honestly but last year I never packed a lunch I would just leave food in my classroom so I would always have like the little tuna packs and like some mayo or I would have like Ritz crackers and turkey or whatever but I found because I never was thinking about my meals it was really hard for me all of a sudden when I would walk my kids down to lunch and come back to my room I would be totally lost for a couple minutes of like okay what am I gonna what am I gonna have to eat because I hadn't thought about it yet so I felt like that took up some of my lunch time so I'm hoping this year I can get better about just packing some lunches and then I can just leave this in my little mini fridge at school but I'm hoping this will help me to save some time and energy once the school year begins I also got a package from a sweet subscriber named Carrie now Carrie actually reached out to me on Instagram and had a wonderful message just so so kind and said uh, kind of the meaning behind some of her gifts so the first thing that she sent to me is too big to show. It's uh, hanging out in my other room and it's ginormous, like two of me. And it is an eight by 10 rug and that is such a blessing. And she just reached out and said that when she was in fourth grade, like that was one of her best years. That was like one of her favorite teachers. And she felt called upon to bless my classroom because of that, which is amazing. So Carrie, thank you so much. That is going to be a meeting space for my students. I have a five by seven rug in my room already which I love and that's gonna stay in there um, I guess it's not in my classroom right now it's in storage right now but it will go back into my classroom once I'm able to get into the building uh, but that 5x7 rug isn't big enough for all of the students to sit upon it at once whereas this 8x10 rug I'm hoping will be big enough that we can all you know circle up on the rug and enjoy our space together so thank you so much for that because it is too big I will try to insert a picture of it right here so you guys can see it but I'm really really excited for that and then her little note says Hi Kim, thanks for all you do as a teacher. Hope you and your students have a terrific year from Carrie Morse and Taffy the Cat too. So she picked out some books as well to send over and a couple of them are like cat related books to, um, I don't know, not like honor her cat, but to represent her cat, which is so cute. So she sent over two of these cat astronauts graphic novels, which one of my kiddos last year uh, bought one of these, I think, at Barnes & Noble and brought it in and all the kids were like obsessed with it. So I already got a couple of these in the mail from another sweet subscriber. And now I believe I have all of the books that are currently available. So I'm super excited about that. I think the kids will really like these. They're just fun, like comic book style books, which I think the kids will really, really enjoy. And also I love cats, so always fun. Sorry if the angle changed slightly. My camera battery died, so I had to go grab a new one. But I got those Cats Turn Out books. And then also she sent over this awesome graphic novel, which I actually have not read this one yet, but it had really good reviews, and I'm really excited to read it. And again, it's just like a comic book style graphic novel. And then I'm so excited about this. This is a series of books. I think I recently hauled one or two of these but it is the science comic series and this is new to me this series and I am obsessed with it I got I think two books so far this might be my third and then I also ordered a bunch off of first book and I'm really excited for those to come these are just so neat you guys like 
it's like an informational graphic novel which i think is such a cool idea and i think my kids are really going to like these my kids love informational books at least my students did last year and so i think that those are definitely or that series i should say is definitely going to be a hit so carrie thank you so much for those and then the last thing she sent over was shouting at the rain which um this one why do i feel like i hauled this already I may have shown this, I feel like I showed this in a video already. Um, oh no, I didn't. It's because um, in my last video I did a first book haul and I talked about how I bought a copy of this book off first book and then the same day Carrie ordered it. And so um, at first I was like, oh no, I feel bad. But then I realized this would be an awesome book club book. So I think I'm gonna pick up one more copy of this book. This is the newest book by this author. She is the same author that wrote Fish in a Tree, which is one of my favorite books. I read this one earlier this summer and it is phenomenal. So if you've not read this one yet and you are an upper L teacher, I would highly recommend reading it and getting it in your classroom because it's awesome. And it's actually set in Cape Cod, which I think I've talked about this before. So sorry guys if I'm getting repetitive, but Chris and I had our honeymoon in Cape Cod and we loved it and we definitely plan on going back. And so that's kind of a cool little feature of that book. Um, kind of a, a, a text to self connection. <laughs> then I got a package over here which this package was from Neely. Neely has sent many of items over before. Neely has just been such a supportive person on my channel ever since I started my journey last summer and just leaves really kind uh, comments and, and she's just awesome. So anyway, she sent over um, a lot of books and I'm really excited. She said in the package, um, she left a little note that said, hi Kim, I hope your book clubs are amazing this year. I wanted to complete three of them for you so you have the full sets from Neely. So Neely, that was so kind of you. I love running book clubs in my room. It's one of my favorite things about being a fourth grade teacher is I feel like book clubs are so much fun. So she sent over some sets of books that I had requested. The first one is What is NASA? I really love these like what is, who was type books because they're pretty digestible for the kids. There are some illustrations and photographs amongst the information. And so even though it is an informational book, it kind of almost reads like realistic fiction uh, at times. So I really, really like those. So thank you so much, Neely, for those. Then speaking of Fish in a Tree, she sent over three copies of Fish in a Tree. This is such a good book, you guys. Um, definitely one that makes you think as a teacher. So I would highly recommend anybody who has not read that one to read it. And then I'm super excited about this one. She sent over three copies of Bat and the Waiting Game. And this is the second one in the series of, um, oh gosh, what is the first book in the series? I'm totally blanking. But, uh, oh, A Boy Called Bat, A Boy Called Bat, um, which that's a really good book that I already have, I think, three or four copies of that I do as a book club book. So the cool thing about having the next one in the series is once those kids finish up the first one, I can say, hey, guys, I actually have the second one in the series if you guys want to read it as your next book club book. And nine times out of ten, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, like we want to read the next one. So kind of a fun little thing to do with the kids just to kind of build their excitement about reading and about book clubs. And I love to give my kids choice in their book club groups as often as I can. So a lot of times, like when we start a new book, I'll give them two different options and they get to talk as a group and make like a pros and cons list and decide ultimately which book they want to read together. So super fun stuff. Neely, thank you so much for those and thank you for your constant love and support on my channel. It is so appreciated. The next package was from Kelly, which she said that her, I think Instagram handle is at everyday in elementary. And she said, hi Kim, I know these buzzers weren't on your list, so you'll see those in a second. But I love them for review games. These two books are my faves, and I know your students will love them too. So she sent over two books, and it's kind of funny because I actually do both of these, or I will do both of these as book club books this year, so it'll be nice to have an extra copy. So the first one is Holes, which I did as a book club book last year. And then I got another copy of Fish in a Tree, which some of my books end up having three kids, and some of them end up having four. So that actually works out perfectly because now I can have a bigger group do Fish in a Tree. So. Kelly, thank you so much for those. And then also she sent over these buzzers, which actually this is kind of funny because I didn't have it on my list, but I, I did last summer. So I do have 
have a pack of four of these already, but I now have five team tables because the amount of students that I have uh, warrants having that extra table. And so it'll be nice because I can still play those review games uh, because before like I would have to split up my fifth table into going to like other tables if that makes sense. So now I can actually have some for each table. So Kelly, thank you so, so much for that. And then the last package that came in is from Mallory. Mallory um, said, let me see. Hi hey Kim, I hope you and your kids have a great school year from Mallory. So Mallory sent over some things I think that might have been on my list and some things that she picked out, I'm pretty sure. And uh, the first thing is the No More Worries kit. So I haven't seen this before. I'm going to have to look through it and kind of figure out what it is. Um, it looks like a really neat like kind of social emotional learning type thing and it says that it helps with like anxiety and fear so really really neat and definitely something that I can use in my classroom then she sent this over which this is kind of funny to me it's a moment for teachers and it's a self-care book I if you know me I struggle with like leaving school once I'm there and I struggle with not like working all the time that is something that is difficult for me it's difficult for me to turn off my teacher brain and turn on my like human brain you know person brain, Kim brain, I don't know. But um, it is very difficult for me. So that book will definitely be used because I just, you know, I need a little help with the whole self-care thing. It's not something that I just naturally do necessarily. So uh, Mallory, thank you for knowing me so well. And then she picked these up, which I actually was just about to order some more of these. These are the magnet peel stick squares. I have these from last year, but um, I only had like a couple left. I used most of them throughout the school year. But these are just awesome for anything that you need to stick up on the board. You're like schedule cards like literally anything so love 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 these then this book is so stinking cute you guys look at that oh, look at that it's so cute i'm so excited so so pumped to have this in my room like look at how cute that is you guys are you serious ah that's so cute so and i love a good picture book seriously and then the other one that she sent over, this is actually one that I do have in my classroom library already, but I'm thinking I might share this with a friend in the building or something like that. It doesn't hurt to have an extra copy. So this is The Good Egg, and I love this book. This is by the same author as The Bad Seed, which is a really, really cute book as well. So super fun, and it kind of just talks about being like a perfectionist and how like nobody's perfect, basically. So a really good message for kids. So that is my little Amazon haul. Now I can clean this up and put everything away which is a good feeling because it's kind of just been sitting on my desk downstairs and I'm like ah <laughs> so anyways I need to get going so I can go to my PD today I'm really excited about it and then I will try to film at some point I don't honestly know when hello friends so it's many hours later now it's like four o'clock almost and i just got back from my training and i feel like it went really well i uh am back with jack now he's excited to have me home um i've talked about it in vlogs i think but he gets locked up when we're all gone because he's a little bit naughty so he likes to be out and about again once i get home so we'll let him free roam um, oh no, don't knock over the camera, please. That's rude. So anyways, uh, this was day two of restorative practices and it went really well. I am feeling fired up and just feeling validated because a lot of the things that we talked about are things that I've been doing in my own classroom. So that was a cool feeling to just have it reiterated that it's backed by best practices and like data and research and all that fun stuff. So <laughs> anyways, feeling good about that. I definitely do want to make that video about restorative practices. I'm hoping I'm going to start feeling a little bit better hopefully in the next couple days because right now it's like I am pretty wiped from the day just in feeling sick and whatever. So um, I'm hoping to do that video but I probably will wait till next week to do that. <sighs> yeah, that's my hope is I'll wait till next week. I'll film it, I'll edit it, and then hopefully get it up sometime in the next couple weeks because once I start school it's going to get pretty crazy again. But um, I did get my class list, which is exciting. So I spent yesterday typing up a bunch of my like labels, and I really like to have the kids' names put in a lot of different places around the room. So they have their name tags, obviously, which go in their little seat sacks. And then I have like their locker tags, but then also I like to have like a couple class lists posted. And I don't know, I just think it's fun to have the kids' names kind of all over the place. So yes, I got those all typed in. And then also I did do like a data sheet. So I made what I like 
like to do is just go on Google Sheets and I make a couple documents where I can record like their running records and then I did one where I uh, imported in all of their data that I had from third grade so I can kind of get like a rough idea of what I'm working with just so I can start thinking about some groupings now my groupings are super flexible and you never know like what's going on during the summer there are some kids who maybe have been working all summer and then there are most of the kids who might have some summer slide when they come into the school year so those groups are flexible also I do have three move-ins I don't remember if I talked about that or not but I do have three students who are going to be new to the district as of right now now I don't know um, actually I shouldn't say new to the district but new to the building so I have three students as of right now but things might change my list is not final until the school year starts and even then it's still not final because um, we don't have a super transient population but we have a somewhat transient popula population so there's gonna be some moving in and out so you just don't know until you know but I did just get home and notice that I have a couple packages waiting for me so I think I'm gonna go open those really quickly and then I'll film a haul of what's inside if it's in the classroom stuff which my guess is it probably is Jack is like garter of the packages right now thou shalt not open the packages Ooh, I see one of them is from first book that's exciting I'll show you guys what I got how do you feel about that Jack what do you think you love boxes huh you love them. Yes. He says, Mom, open the boxes so I can lay in the boxes. I love a good empty box, Mom. So I just opened up the couple of boxes that came and I'm so excited about what was inside. The first one was an Amazon package from Mallory and so funny because you guys just saw it like a second ago but for me it was like several hours ago. I had said that I wanted another copy of this book for book club so now I have three copies of Shouting at the Rain. Super excited for that and then also she sent over a copy of The Bad Seed which is the partner book to The Good Egg. Not really partner book but it's like the same author, same idea. Then I had a package come in from first book which I talked about first book in a previous vlog I believe I'm like pretty sure if you're not signed up for first book already and you are a teacher I highly recommend it you can get super discounted books and I just recently got a coupon code from them that they just sent in an email so make sure you check your emails from them and they were offering $35 worth of free books no strings attached free shipping everything was amazing so I shared that with like all of the teachers in my building I like sent out a mass email and then I texted a bunch of people because that's incredible so I'm so thankful for first book and just the fact that they are uh, getting books in the hands of teachers therefore getting the books in the hands of students so some of these did go over that $35 amount so I did spend I think like 10 or $20 probably let me see if it says on here it does not so it doesn't say how much I spent but I know it did go over by at least a little bit I feel like it was like 10 or $15 maybe if that but I got a ton of books so I'm really excited about it so first I got a bunch of these science comic books which I was just talking about how excited I was about these these are so cool you guys so I got one for coral reefs dogs sharks and dinosaurs and these are just so neat you guys like I'm just so 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 excited about these I feel like the kids are going to love them they're just so neat like how engaging are these you guys like I'm so pumped so I got those I'm really excited about them also I picked up a bunch of picture books I love using picture books in my classroom the first one is girl running this one I was really really excited about this is about the Boston Marathon and a women, woman, woman, woman runner. Yep. Super cool. I love books that empower women. Then I got this book. This is called Mix. I actually have not read this, you guys, but it looked too cute. And I've seen it on Instagram before. And so I just decided I need it. So I'll have to read it. But it's just adorable. Like, look at those illustrations. So I'm really excited to read that. I'll have to do that right after I film this clip. Then I got this book. This is another one I have not read, but I've seen again on Instagram before and it's just so cute. I love a good nonfiction picture book. They're some of my favorite to have in my library because the kids love reading these during deer time. Then I got this one, which this is a Caldecott Honor. Awesome. This one's a really, really cute book. Then I got this one, which oh, look at this book, you guys. Like, if I saw this at a bookstore, there's no way I wouldn't grab it and want to look at it. So, like, seeing this in my classroom library, I feel like a lot of the kids just, like, that 
cover just jumps out to you and I'm really excited about it. This is a Caldecott honor and then also it's a Coretta Scott King award winner. So super exciting stuff. This one is uh, one that I have not read yet but again I'm really excited to do that. The illustrations are just amazing in this. Like what? That's phenomenal. So I'm so 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 excited about that. And then last but not least I got this book which again gorgeous book. Just like the cover of that is amazing and it just is about imagination and I'm really excited about this one. Again, beautiful illustration. So I love picture books. They have a special place in my heart and I love adding new ones to my classroom library. Now normally these would probably be like $20 each. On first book they're usually between like five to nine-ish dollars and they're hardcover, you may have noticed. All of these that I got are hardcover. I really like having hardcover picture books. I will say the only downfall is they have like the book sleeves so it's hard because sometimes if you take the book sleeves off it doesn't look the same on the cover I wish the covers were the same as the book sleeves a lot of times that's not the case so I do try to keep the book sleeves on if you have any tips for that let me know I just teach the kids and say like hey we'll just be really careful with those um, but they do sometimes get ripped and that's life um, I've heard of people laminating them before and doing that but I just I don't know if that's worth it or not <laughs> because it's one of those things that like it doesn't really need the book sleeve I just prefer it to have the book sleeve so I just teach the kids like how we handle our books but you know sometimes things happen but that's life so super excited about all my new books you guys know how I feel about books passionately I don't know if these are new or what but I like hadn't seen them before until really recently and there's like a lot of really awesome information in these too not a lot of text per page so like a pretty quick read but I'm really excited about that. Also this year, which this was true for me last year too, but it's more true this year than it was last year. I have a lot of students coming in at super varied reading levels. Like last year that was kind of true, but I had like some easier groupings. Like there were a lot of kids who needed to work on the same concepts who were like around the same level, um, at least for like Fountas and Pinnell levels. So this year my guided reading might look a little bit different. I have some pretty varied levels and I have like a lot of kids who are in one section and then not as many in some of the other sections, if that makes sense. So last year I just felt like it was a lot more evenly distributed than it will be this upcoming year. So different challenges come with every different list of students and every group of students, every community of students. Students. and so I am starting to get a little bit nervous I guess about like I don't know this year like I just I feel like that's normal though like I was talking with some teachers today at the professional development I went to and some of them have been teaching for 20 years and they said hey I'm still nervous when I get my new class list like I still am worried that I won't be able to meet their needs so it is a little nerve-wracking because I, I want all of my students do the best they can possibly do and I want them to grow and I want them to exceed their own expectations and I just want them to love learning as much as I do <laughs> and even then some and just know that they are loved above everything else and like have all of their social emotional needs met but then in addition to that also like thrive academically so there's just so much that goes into teaching so Anyways, I'm on my soapbox, but I'm so excited for this new year. I'm getting so close. We start a week from this upcoming Tuesday, and we have our open house a week from this upcoming Monday. So it goes open house, and then the first day of school is the next morning. So pretty crazy, you guys. I'm getting so excited, though. I have so much I want to do. I think tomorrow I'm going to go to one of the other elementary schools in my district and do some printing because they gave us permission to go over there and do some printing, which is so nice of them because we're not able to get into our building. And it's unconfirmed if we'll have access to technology once we do get into our building because our technology is being stored off-site, obviously, because the building's under construction. And so the tech crews or I don't know I don't know who does it but somebody is gonna have to get all that stuff and bring it back so we might not have like printers we might not have desktop computers we might not have anything so it'll be interesting you guys it'll be really really interesting to see what happens this first week of school but I'm fun I'm flexible that's what I keep trying to remind myself so it's all gonna be just fine 
In the meantime, I am pretty wiped from today. I am kind of exhausted. I feel like it takes more energy out of me to be in a professional development or a meeting than it does to teach all day because it's a lot of sitting and listening, like a lot of sit and get, <laughs> sometimes people say. And I'm just the type of person I need to be like talking and engaged and active. Like I'm always on my feet when I teach. I never sit down unless I'm like at my small group table, I guess. But even then, I'm like constantly standing. So... It's just different and like all summer, you know, I wasn't sitting down a whole lot. So yeah, I'm kind of wiped after three days in a row of professional developments and meetings and all that fun stuff, but life is good. I feel like I learned a lot this week and now it is time to put all these books away. And I think I want to do a little bit of work on classroom stuff tonight, just like making some different things for my classroom, but we'll see. We'll see what's going on. I don't exactly know, but life's good. Hello friends. So today is Friday. It is August 16 and it's actually like around 10 a.m. right now. I'm just about to go out of the house but I want to show you guys some things that I've been working on. So last night I started a project at like literally 11 o'clock at night and it was one of those things that like once I started I couldn't stop until it was finished. I don't know if you guys ever get in that mindset but like that happens to me kind of a lot. If I start a project I don't like to stop it until it's done. And so anyways I ended up spending a couple hours on this which means I did not finish until a little after 1am but I'm obsessed with it. I showed you guys my maker space or like my stem bins I think in one of my last vlogs, maybe the last vlog. This was super inspired by Fantastically Fourth. Her name is Shane, she is on Instagram and she's amazing, so go check her out if you haven't already. But she uses these task card organizers and then puts small stem materials inside of them. Now I used my Cricut last night and I labeled everything, that was my big project. But I will say I had fully intended on writing stem bins on the front and my like late night brain with like having a cold and having cold medicine and like all that stuff. Uh, totally forgot and so I wrote makerspace instead of stem bins and I do wish it said stem bins but it's also like not that big of a deal it's not gonna bother me enough that I really want to change it so I'm just gonna leave that alone <laughs> but I'm really proud of this uh, I just like labeled each of the little individual task card holders the material that's inside which some of them I kind of just had to like make up a name so for example this material top I just got at a garage sale um, and they're like these little shapes like that and I didn't know what to call them and so I was looking at them and to me they kind of look like little planes like going through the air so I just labeled these planes which I'm like the kids are gonna call them like whatever the label says like it really doesn't matter but that way they kind of have an idea of what material they're using and then also if I want to do like a circle after we do stem bins then I could say like what material did you use today and they could say oh well I did uh, planes today or I used the plane box today and then the other kids would know what that meant so that will just kind of help with some like general terminology for the class and then I got an extra little task card organizer thing you can buy these individually as well as in the packs and so this was just an individual one from Michaels and then I labeled the front stem cards and this has all the cards inside that I showed in my last video where they can grab one of these and then have an idea of something that they can make so I'm gonna use this in a couple different ways as of right now I'm thinking twice a week in the mornings this will be our go-to I haven't decided if that'll be like Wednesday and Friday Tuesday and Thursday whatever um, but twice a week we will have some sort of assignment with the stem bin so sometimes it might be just like free build build whatever you want and possibly for the first couple times that we do it it might just be free build just to get familiar with the materials and comfortable with them and whatnot but then sometimes it will be an actual assignment so I might say to my kids when they come in in the morning or like have a slide projected that says build something that you wish you could invent or build something that would make the school a better place or something like that and then other times I might pass out these little cards and say okay build something that's on one of your cards and so there will be some different options and that will help the kids not get bored with it also I'm gonna have five team tables in my room um, as of right now I have 19 students I just got three move-ins recently which is really Really, really exciting so as of right now I have 19 students but like I might get more who knows so I am gonna do five team tables um, which means I have 16 of these little task card organizers so each table will get three and there will just be one left over and that's totally fine uh, so I'm kind of debating I haven't decided hundred percent if I'm gonna say like you need three different boxes or if I could say okay you can um, 
get you know both boxes of the gears let's say to build something that's like even bigger if you like work together so i haven't exactly decided yet but we'll see i'm not too worried about that but that was a big project it took me a couple hours but i'm so excited about how it turned out and just to incorporate stem more into my classroom and some free build options and some creativity builders and all that fun stuff so super super pumped about that and then the other thing this is something i saw something very very similar to this on instagram and loved it. So you guys might know on my channel, uh, I filmed a vlog or maybe a couple vlogs last school year where I used a sub tub and so my substitute just had to grab like the tub of materials and all the lesson plans were in there like everything that uh, he or she needed for the day was just right inside. Well, I saw somebody do something like this, which is a substitute station, which actually has different sections. And this little uh, card or letter organizer, or desk organizer, or whatever, uh, I believe was from either Marshalls Target, or sorry, either Marshalls or TJ Maxx. Um, and it wasn't super expensive. It was more than the tub though that I used, but I'll definitely use my like sub tub that I had last year for something else. So uh, I, I did think it was worth getting this because I just think this is so nice to have the different compartments so my game plan is I'm going to have my substitute binder in the back right here so sticking up top and that will have like the lesson plans inside as well as some of our like routines procedures who to call in case of emergencies blah 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 then right in front of that maybe on its side if it will fit I want to have our emergency folder just so it's right there that way if there is an, an emergency of some sort the sub can just grab it and go and then in these little compartments I'm going to make a little like small condensed version of some of the need to knows in the classroom so if the sub wants to like attach it to their badge for the day they can where it would be like a class list a schedule and then emergency numbers just like a few things that they would need to know and then I always do a treat for the sub so the treat for the sub will go somewhere in there and then also in the other one whichever one I don't use for the treat for the sub I would put some of our behavior incentive system stuff in there so like our star tickets for example so I'm really excited about this so I just used my Cricut last night and I wrote substitute station on there this will most likely be stored in my back room until I know that I'm going to have a substitute and in that binder I will have emergency sub plans as well luckily this past year I didn't have to use those but there were a couple times that it would have been nice to use them like if you don't know you're gonna be sick obviously and then all of a sudden you wake up sick or something like that happens it's really hard to write sub plans that morning or like the night before when you already don't feel good so that's something that I'm going to add in this summer uh, before the start of the school year or shortly after the start of the school year I guess so that way it kind of saves me some grief if I have to deal with that. So those were two projects I did last night. I also did another project this morning that I want to show you guys related to my book club. So let me hop on my computer really quick so I can show you guys that. So before the end of the school year, I worked on adding all of my book club books to a Google document uh, just so I knew what I had already and how many copies. And then this summer, as I've gotten more book club books, I've added those to here as well. Well, yesterday, or no, sorry, this morning actually, I went through and I looked up the level of each of the books and added them in. And it actually was really interesting. There were a couple that were like higher levels than I thought they would be. And for some reason, I thought I had more in this like area up here. Um, so I was a little surprised to find out I didn't have as many like beginning fourth grade books as I thought I did. So that's something I'll need to look into and, uh, potentially add because I realized I was giving some of my kids some books that were a little bit higher than I probably should have though I will say this is their independent level and book clubs are really more of a guided reading level so they can read a little bit higher than their uh, independent level if that makes sense because it's more of like an instructional level but I realized I have 41 sets of books and in all of these I have at least uh, two or three copies most of them if it says two that means I also have a copy that's in my classroom library So that means I have at least three of all of these some of them. I have like four or five um, If I look at Frindle right here, I actually have eight copies of Frindle, which is awesome So I could do a couple different book clubs of that. So I'm really excited about this I think this will be a lot easier to kind of organize my thoughts and then also I'm going to use this to organize my bin So I'm really excited about that I think you guys can hopefully see some of the titles on there um it's kind of hard to show like a clip of my computer screen obviously but i'm really really excited about that so lots of good books on here 
So I've talked about on my channel before the fact that I do not level books in my classroom. I like my library to just be based on genre and interest and um, series and authors and stuff like that. And then I want the kids to go in and pick whatever book they're interested in because I really think that that fosters a love for reading and learning and a passion for it. And uh, actually if I get a book from the thrift store and it has a label written on it, I actually cross it off with Sharpie or put a sticker over it because I don't want my kids to be thinking about that when they're trying to choose an independent reading book. Uh, the list of the books that I have on my computer as well, I will not be putting the label of the level on the book itself because I don't think the kids need to worry about it, but this is going to help me know what's going to be a good fit for that book club group. So that means... I usually partner kids, for book clubs at least, uh, all around the same level. So these are all Fountas and Pinnell levels, by the way. I don't think I said that yet. So I try to find them a group where they're around the same level. And if there's multiple groups that are around the same level, then I do a focus on uh, mixing up the needs. So that means if one kid really needs to work on comprehension and another one really needs to work on fluency, I'll partner them together so they can help each other out with that. So anyways, uh, this will help me recommend a couple different books because what I like to do in my book clubs is I'll give them two stacks of books and I think I talked about this early in the vlog they have to decide as a group which one they're going to read for that book club rotation so uh, this will help me give them good options and then also it helps me see as a teacher what I'm lacking in my book club group so I'm realizing I have a lot of like level R's level S's but I don't have as many like O's and P's and Q's I actually only have one book that's a Q and so that's something that's telling me now I need to look into getting some more books that are uh, those levels because clearly I don't have a fair amount and I have a lot of kids who are coming in at the beginning of the year at level you know O, P, Q, um, some kids who are coming in at like M and N and so I want to meet the needs of those students as well. So anyways that is going to be a project for me is looking up some different good books that I can include that are some different levels. So I'm excited about that and I'm really glad that I did this. This was one of those things I actually really hadn't thought about doing for whatever reason and now that I did it, I'm so glad I did. I feel like this is going to be so, so helpful. So I'm really excited about that. So on the agenda for today, sorry, my nose itches. <laughs> Don't mind me. Um, on the agenda for today, I'm actually about to go into a couple towns over to go to a different Target than I have because I really want some more of those adhesive label pocket things. Uh, I have thought of so many uses for them and I have one pack already. I have one pack of 20, but like I said, I don't know if I'm going to have more than 20 students. So so I want to make sure I get, get at least one more pack, but I would love to have even two or three more packs because I can think of a lot of different things that I could use them for. As of right now, the plan that I, d I definitely want to implement with the ones that I have already is I'm going to be making little writing offices out of some file folders. And I want to have an adhesive pocket where they can stick their conference notes in from our little writing conferences. Because sometimes I find the kids go back to their seats and they forget what we've talked about in our conference. So I actually made up just some uh, like little square... Uh, conference forms I guess in PowerPoint that will fit perfectly into those pockets that say like what we talked about today or like my goal for my writing or like a strength and uh, something to work on or something like that. I can't remember how I worded it but that idea so that way when they go back to their seats they can continue that thought process and it's not lost in the conference time. So um, yeah that's my plan for those adhesive pockets that I definitely want to do and then I'm hoping to do a few other things with them as well if I am able to get some more. I also saw that somebody posted on Instagram some fraction pencils from the Target dollar spot that I have never seen before but I teach fractions and fractions can be an incredibly different difficult concept for kids not all kids some kids like just get it and it makes sense to them especially if it's like language that's used at home or whatever but for a lot of kids it's like totally weird and different like the idea of something being less than one whole is just weird. So um, I want to encourage the use and the understanding of fractions whenever possible. So I think that would be super cool to get. 
So a couple of different things on my radar. Uh, it's like I said, just past 10 a.m. right now. I am tutoring today at 2.30 because uh, the rest of the week I had professional developments. So normally I tutor on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but because I was in meetings, I'm going to tutor today, which I've said before, I'll say it again. I love tutoring. I'm kind of bummed that the summer is ending because I would love to continue tutoring, but I know it's something that's not really as doable during the school year just for me because my time is so limited during the school year. But yeah, that's life. Also, exciting news. Uh, apparently, the boxes that were in stores that the school was storing, so like all the curriculum books and some of the furniture, I think, they were delivered back to the school yesterday, apparently. So I don't know that for a fact. I haven't seen it with my own eyes, but word on the street is that that is what has happened. So I'm hoping that means we'll be getting in fairly soon because uh, just the other day I was told that it's possible we will not be getting in until the day of our open house, which is Monday. Like that would be the day that we are granted access. So now it's looking like that's not gonna be the case. So I'm gonna at least have a couple days, which you know, a couple is better than one. So I will take it. Uh, but anyways, I better pack up all my stuff. So I'm ready for tutoring, ready for the day. And then I will touch base with you guys when I am out of the house and maybe at Target. So see you guys then. Hello friends, so I'm out and about right now. I have not made it to Target just yet, but I am headed there soon. Uh, I did swing by, I needed to get, well, needed. I wanted to look at a couple things at Michael's and right next to Michael's there's Marshall's. So I went to Marshall's first and actually found two dresses on clearance. I'll insert some pictures right over here. I got one maxi dress that was $12 and then I got like a regular flowy dress. Um, I feel like there's a word for it, trapeze dress maybe or something, I don't know. But I got one that was $20 and it's leopard print and really cute and I think it was from the Anne Klein brand, so like good quality. So excited about that. And then I went over to Michael's and I got another task card organizer because I just feel like these are so handy for like literally anything and everything. And so yeah, I'm excited about that because I'm trying to revamp, you know, like my workshop model this year for math and for ELA. So excited about that so I uh, got that and then also I got some ribbon as well but nothing too exciting I was hoping to pick up some cardstock but it wasn't on sale and I just couldn't justify the price tag now I'm sitting outside of Gordman's because I like never ever go to Gordman's unless I'm in this city because we don't have one near me and so I'm just gonna go glance in really quick I like to look at like their home goods especially so I'm gonna glance over here just like while I'm in this little area and then I think I'm gonna head over to Target so it's about noon right now I should probably leave this town by like 1 1 30 ish because i think i am tutoring at 2 30. i usually tutor either 2 30 or 3 30 so i'm pretty sure 2 30 is when i'm tutoring today because i haven't heard otherwise and that's like our normal time so i'm gonna go in we'll see if i find anything good Hello, sweet friends. So it is Saturday now, and I just edited everything that you saw so far. I apologize. I feel like this vlog was kind of boring because I was just like sitting down and talking to you guys all the time and not really like doing a whole lot. But I'm hoping that this upcoming week I can show you guys some more things that I'm actually doing, either at my house to prepare for my classroom or once I get in my classroom, then I'll have some vlogs. So uh, I do want to end this here. This was a pretty long vlog with not really a whole lot that happened so hopefully you guys still enjoyed it go ahead and leave me a comment below and let me know how you're doing today remember that you're incredibly beautiful and loved and i will see you guys next time bye guys